Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talk. Art and Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art, creativity, and passion. We embrace all the arts, the traditional arts, and the spiritual arts to bring you diverse and quality interviews to watch and to be inspired by. Thank you so much for watching today and being with us. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk. Please stay connected with us on social media, on our YouTube channel, and also on our Facebook page. Today, we have a very interesting subject to look into. First of all, it's our, our guest artist, who is a fine um, art photographer, has spent the pandemic working in a very highly charged, creative way. And we're going to be looking at some of her artwork that she's created during the pandemic and looking at a select a view of, of images of that. And uh, looking also into the 1920s and looking into photography and collage and finding out more about her artwork and how she spent the pandemic creating these. So I'd like to welcome today our guest artist, Louise Noakes. Louise, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I, I'm very excited about sharing my, my journey in the past year with everybody. Oh, thank you. We're so glad that you're here. Um, before we get into the pandemic and, and how you spent that and, and your, your creative um, output with this whole theme uh, with the 1920s and photography and collage, um, you have an interesting background with your photography, um, kind of offshooting in some different areas. Can you share a little bit about your background with us, Louise? Oh, sure. Um, I got into photography in basically 1969, long time ago. <laughs> And um, the first photograph I ever made was what they called a photogram, where you put an object down on a piece of paper, you flash a light at it, and that's it, you develop it. From that moment, I knew I wanted to do manipulations. I wanted to experiment with photography. I love all forms of photography, but the idea of coming up with something new that was me, that was was something I invented was very important to me. So um, I've gotten over the years, I've started to mix medias and, and print on different um, substrates and just explored photography in every way possible. And, um, you know, with digital, of course, that opened up a whole new world for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's basically, um, a summary, a quick summary of what I've been doing the last few years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very good. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the pandemic and how you use this time creatively to work with this whole um, Parisian, French 1920s theme, photography collage. How, how did all this start and, and, and share with us this really interesting project? Yeah, I have a, a dear friend who is also a photographer here in South Florida, although right now he's up in Toronto, which is my hometown originally. But anyways, um, he came over one day and he, he said, I've got something for you. He came over with these two boxes of glass stereoscopic negatives. Now, they they were photographed by a photographer in the 1920s who was an experimenter also, like I am. And um, he said, you know, I, I want to get copies of these because probably one day I'll put them up for sale. I bought them about 20 years ago and I played with them and really haven't, um, I mean, I made prints and this and that. He said, but I think you, can do something really interesting with these. So I had been uh, for the past few years doing a lot of collage work. I sort of now consider myself a collage artist and besides being a photographer, but I was using my own photographs. So anyways, he said, you know, go for it, do whatever you can. I know you're gonna do something great with them. So that was in, two, the, in fall of 2019. And um, I kind of knew what I was gonna do right out from the start. And um, so anyways, and then when the pandemic hit, um, I really got into working with these things. Um, I would, I copied 
most of them or, or copied the ones that I felt I could use. And, um, you know, so I, I, I did a little job for him as far as, you know, what he wanted. But then I, then I started um, printing them, playing with them in the computer, and then taking them out of the computer, having them printed onto like a metallic paper. And then from there, I started collaging on top and using all different types of materials. I also gave a nod to the fact that the reason why these were stereoscopic slides was because they were meant to be printed and then viewed through one of those stereoscopic cameras or viewers, you know, like almost like the little slide things that we had as kids where you look through and it's three dimensional, all of a sudden you're there. And uh, so, um, but what I did is I started putting some of the paper objects that I was collaging onto the paper and having them stand out a bit. So I was kind of giving a nod to his idea of it being three dimensional. Mm -hmm. Um, they print up okay as two-dimensional, but the three-dimensional, it just adds something fun. And I think, I, I mean, I almost felt like this man was sitting next to me saying, and why don't you do this? And, <laughs> you know, but um, so I was sort of bringing his art back to life and into an, a time that he probably would have just been thrilled to be part of this time. As I, and I've always said that if I had to pick a decorate gate that I would have liked to have experienced, it would have been the crazy years as the French call it, or as we call it, the roaring twenties, mm -hmm. because it was such a happy time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, for me, I mean, I'm looking to the future. Now everybody is starting to feel good again. Uh, things are opening up. And it's going to be very interesting as to what happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there's so many parallels. Um, parallels with, you know, the timeliness of, of what's going on globally, you know, with so many things and the, um, you know, relating it in, in a parallel way to, you know, the 1920s Parisian post-war and then happy times and um, also your um, openness and desire to experiment creatively and artistically. And in Paris in the 1920s, they were, you know, really embraced, you know, um, new art forms and art and literature. It was just like all, all over the place and embracing and what was rejected or, or at least not welcome somewhere else was, you know, welcome with open arms. So, oh, so yeah. many parallels. Absolutely. And, and just the fact that I mean, the whole learning experience of dealing with the now and then has made me feel even more open and, and ready to, you know, really experiment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, um, it's been really interesting. It's been so rewarding in many ways. Yes, yes. Let's take a look at uh, some of the images if that works for you and have you uh, elaborate on them. Oh, okay, yeah, we can do that. I thought we were gonna show the video first of the opening, but. Would you prefer to show the video first? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> do you wanna set that up for us so we know a little bit about what the video is? Sure, um, the video, well, the opening was on April 9th at Hatch 1121, and that's also in Lake Worth Beach. It's actually right across the street from where I live. And it's a, a lovely gallery. And um, I was actually in, it was three shows. Um, another one of my um, um, neighbors was in it. And then a friend of mine uh, from way back, another wonderful photographer. But um, it was like we all decided we were all doing different things. So we would make it like three different shows in one, you know, sort of a mini, mini Art Basel. Um, so um, it was April 9th. And uh, it, it was in the evening and we had fantastic music, wine, macaroons. <laughs> and uh, I was very pleased with how many people showed up because I knew, you know, we were really pushing it a bit. There, look, half of the people are not really that comfortable still with being around people. Maybe if we would have waited a couple more weeks, it would have been even that much better, but it turned out pretty good. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we had a nice showing, a uh, lot of positive responses. Um, so yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this from your art opening from um, last month in April and the, the crazy years. And then we'll look at some of the specific sure. art. All right, okay. sounds great. Okay, just give me just a moment and let me pull it up. video and it looked like such a fun art opening. Yeah, it was. Um, that was the idea to, to do something that was a lot of fun, that would lift everybody's spirits. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, yes, Louise. And it showcases your art so beautifully. And there's such a sense of um, design and composition and, and rhythm. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, first of all, the song that um, it's um, but you know, oh, you know what? I think it's the next video. We have to. Can this beanie mask protect my head me, from harmful 4G and 5G cell phone radiation? My EMF meter is going crazy. All right, there's a little bit of the crazy years. <laughs> and a little crazy here on Art and Talk. All right. With somebody visiting, I guess, from the 20s. <laughs> Evidently, yes. Oh, so where was I? Oh, yeah. So um, Ruby Mockingbird sang that song that she actually wrote herself. And I was convinced that it was a song from the 1920s because she had done a bunch of songs during the summer. But I thought she did an excellent job. And it just really seemed to go along with the whole thing. <laughs> um, yeah, the design, you know, I think living in South Florida, for one thing, we look at a lot of Art Deco all the time. We go down to South Beach, there's so much of it. You know, even up here, we have some beautiful buildings that were all designed um, as Art Deco. 
So it, it's part, I feel like, you know, it's part of who I am now. I've, I've lived in this area for eight years mm -hmm. and I've always loved that, that art period of Art Nouveau and then Art Deco, Dada, all of those things. I've always loved those and um, gotten a lot of inspiration from them, um, from those periods. Um, but um, so that was an easy thing for me to do. Um, I, I think I am uh, in my next life, I may be a graphic designer. Um, <laughs> but I, I missed out on a calling. I, I have in the past gotten to do a few things um, when I've worked for different people that, you know, involve some graphic design. So, um, but yeah, I, I wanted them to look clean and fresh and not cluttered. Um, I know a lot of it is symmetrical, uh, a lot of geometry, a lot of shapes, um, triangles, squares, circles. I have all of the, I used a lot of stamps. I got these little punch stamps that I bought. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun playing with those and then um, doing foiling on them um, to give them a little bit more of a modern touch. Um, and then adding items such as um, Swarovski jewels, pearls, uh, beads, just, you know, old pieces I found on the ground <laughs> sometimes. Um, so I had a lot of fun embellishing mm -hmm. and collaging these pieces. Mm -hmm. And you can really feel that sense of fun through the collaging and, and through the embellishing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of, it's almost like getting dressed in a way, collaging, because, you know, you put something down and then you look at it for a while and then you come back and know that, you know, oh, no, I'll move that there. I'll move. And it just, it reminds me of decorate, it's decorating, it's fashion, it's so many different things all wrapped into one. Right, right. Absolutely. So it sounds like part of the creative process in these collage photographic works Louise, is um, you kind of moving the pieces around and then there's like a thought process of like and stepping back and then kind of seeing how it all kind of plays out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny because a lot of people will say to me, oh, you know, what's collage? You throw down some papers and glue them down and that's it. And I thought, no, it's probably just as time consuming as doing any art form at all because it does take some thought and, you know, where you place things is very important. I mean, I probably, as I worked on these, uh, things would change completely or I would toss one aside, but there were ones that I actually completed and I didn't like that much. But then when I hung them in the show, they said a lot, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so kind of seeing them in a different setting kind of like gave you a different orientation, so to speak. Mm hmm right, right. But also, you know, capturing uh, the essence of what Art Deco was. And, and you know, as I say, with the, seeing the buildings and, and everything around here, the architect, it just becomes part of you and it, it'll, it, it just comes out. Mm -hmm. What what is it that you're attracted to with the Art Deco? It's the lines, the, the movement. What 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 is it that you're relating to that speaks to you? I think it's the um, it's the design. The design I find really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. But you know, it, it has so many possibilities too. Uh, you can do so much with it, and you can change it up. And I mean, you know, I I never put any restrictions down as far as um, um, what I could do and how close I had to have it to what, because I don't think they had any rules either. I don't think they had any rules about anything in the 1920s except to enjoy life and have fun and be creative. And mm -hmm. so maybe that's what it is. Yes, yes. And um, so with, with the fun and enthusiasm, and the, the creative outlet for you and, and your love of, of art and creativity and photography. So there was like a, a little bit of a, a contrast, you know, with what was going on, you know, with the pandemic. So can you talk to us kind of like, you know, in respect to that, because that was what was going on 
And so did, was this kind of a therapeutic for you? It was um, a, a great, you know, release or, uh, you know, and then of course, spending your time, you know, creatively, you know, while everybody was, you know, experiencing and, and you know, some still are. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I tell you during um, about 2008, when we had that uh, big recession and everybody was so depressed during that whole period, um, I took on a project of photographing drag queens, but not, not the, well, I don't think it's depressing, but like a lot of people will photograph them and you know them putting on the makeup and that whole transformation. What I did is, I photographed them and tried to turn them into the characters that they were trying to be. So they were almost like cartoonish. And, um, and, and in fact, one of the drag queens, when she saw my show, she said, this is exactly how we feel, you know, this is crazy, you know? Um, so I did something fun during that period also. And uh, I guess that's why I decided, well, you know, this is gonna be tough. Um, we're, I'm going to be quarantined here for weeks on end. Um, luckily, I have this project to work on. And, you know, it's going to make life a lot easier for me. And it'll be something that I can share with everybody when it's all over, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> hopefully it's over. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Louise, how many pieces are in the series of The Crazy Years? There's about... 28, I believe, that are completed. I'm still working on them. And actually, I've started working on some new photographs of people now um, that um, are also collages, with, but photographs that I've taken. And um, just in cafes and, you know, out and about, and just, you know, that's what I'm looking for. People that look like, you know, they're dressed up and in their enjoying life. And um, yeah, they, they're trying to make their lives as creative as possible. Yeah. So but we'll see what happens. I mean, I don't know, you know, there's, um, there's also the whole, um, the things that were happening during the pandemic, a lot of them were very, it was very sad, you know, with Black Lives Matter and, you um, I mean, there was just so many different things that went on. And it's not like I pushed that aside. I, I feel I did photograph some marches and different things, but um, I feel like, you know, those issues are going to have to be resolved in a way during this next 10 years too, or we're gonna have to make some, some uh, changes in the way we think. Mm -hmm. yes. So, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, you know, it, it's, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't see into the future, but I'm just gonna try and see what I can. I mean, maybe in another hundred years when we have hopefully not another pandemic, somebody will be taking my work and making art out of it, collaging it or something. Yeah, just kind of passing it on down. Passing it on every hundred years. That would be a nice legacy, actually. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So is the message through these um, crazy years collage uh, work, Louise, um, like a message of hope and inspiration, you know, and then specifically kind of, you know, coming out like, of, of this whole yeah. global situation? Yeah, life goes on. You know, life goes on. I mean, they were so happy. They'd gone through a war and then they went through a pandemic. And it wasn't a long period. It was like, what was it, 1929, they had a, a depression and then they had another war. There were undertones of, of um, uh, rightist groups and Hitler and everything, even through that time. But, you know, these people are just so happy to have that liberated freedom. And I think these women, you know, it was like, yeah, you know, sure, I'll pose for you. Maybe I could be a, a model like Kiki or, you know, like <laughs> I could be the next Josephine Baker. 
And um, and they were just having such a wonderful time going to all the cafes and places in in Paris and um, jazz concerts and the music was changing. All the Americans were coming over and, and, you know, becoming artists and um, Gertrude Stein (laughs) with her salons and, you know, I think, um, I mean, there's a lot of that actually going on in South Florida too. I mean, um, I, I've lived in the Washington DC area before I came down here. And uh, there's a pretty big art community up there too, but they seem a little more engaged down here. And I don't know if it's because we're close to Art Basel and you know we have the, the Palm Beach Convention Center and the modern and um, what is it? the other show <laughs> uh, in, in January. Um, but um, yeah, I think uh, everybody's going to be really happy to get back to normal mm-hmm. and then some. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So would you like to take a look at some of these? And, and oh yeah, sure. Here, I'm totally forgetting. Okay. All right, Louise, just a moment. And let's, let's take a look at some of these crazy years. Okay. Okay, yeah, this is actually one of the first pieces that I did. And um, it was, I think, it, one of my favorite photographs. Um, it gives a little bit of a nod to Man Ray. Right? If you're familiar with Man Ray, the photographer, he was a, uh, he became a very well-known fashion photographer in the 20s. and lived with uh, Kiki and you know, it was a big part of that whole scene. Um, but then, you know, I did the whole art deco thing and then some of these pieces are in relief and everything. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, you can tell, I mean, I, I used even some little designs right out of Photoshop, you know. Um, and I, um, I collect a lot of um, wallpaper Mm-hmm. and fabric books and so I cut those up so that I have nice textures and sometimes I paint on them and um, this one has like little studs on the top that I glued on there <laughs> um, but um, yeah that was one of the first pieces that I did mm-hmm. it kind of evolved and then would come back to being kind of like that too but different mm-hmm. It's just amazing that the whole sense of design and and I feel that if someone maybe didn't have much um, knowledge base on the 1920s and, and the whole French Parisian you know experience and what was going on and you know and fashion and the arts and, and literature the cafes Gertrude Stein all that I, I feel like you really exude that you would really you know get a sense of that. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's one in here that I'll tell you about that. I don't know how it came out of me, but it's, yeah. It just, as I say, you know, I, a lot of times I felt like this person was sitting right next to me, um, guiding me along. But um, I have a lot of books on Art Deco, and, you know, I consumed a lot of the, the graphics and everything for right. many years. I always loved looking at that kind of art. Right, right. So all this came out and, and I love that you felt like you had his help kind of like guiding you along the way, you know, to use, right. you know, a variety of, of different materials. Yeah. And I, you know, like this piece, I love the fact that there's sort of a negative and a positive of the women, the circles. I don't know if you notice that. And then also uh, the one that's positive looks very solarized, which is very man rayish. He did a lot of solarizations. Mm-hmm. So we have the Man Ray influence as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's always been one of my favorite photographers. <laughs> Just beautiful. So, so well done. And so like, such a strong intellectual vibe. Just, just looking at it, the whole, the whole placement, Louise. And I love how you mentioned that, you know, with, with the negative you know, kind of back and forth with the women yeah. and the gray and the, just, like you know, going into two different realities, you know? Yes. yes. 
Was there anything else you'd like to say? Do you want to go to the next one? No, I think that, yeah, we can go on to the next one. All right. Okay. <laughs> now this, this one's interesting. This is good that you showed this one right after that one because um, this is also a nod to Man Ray. As you can see that she has been a little solarized. She's almost becoming like a negative. Um, don't ask me how I did it because it was done in the computer. You can do those kind of things. Um, and, and then the, the strong graphic design element of it also. But this one was done, I think this was like the second to the last piece that I did. Now, Louise, do these ideas, do they just um, come to you? You know, you, you had the image, you know, you have the, the photograph of the woman from the 1920s to kind of, you know, center around, play around with. Mm -hmm. um, you know how you're going to work it up, you know, design wise um, and, you know, potential materials you're going to use. But in, in terms of the actual composition and, and whatnot, does that sort of happen as you're creating it? Or did you have some like preliminary thought in terms of shapes and materials or how did that come together? Well, about half of that, those shapes were done right in the computer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I worked on top of that with paper and, and putting the triangles and squares, making them stand out a bit. So, you know, I, I kind of lay it out and then I play with it and maybe I'll leave it for a couple of days and come back and move things around again until I'm happy with it. And, um, and then I glue it all down. Mm -hmm. So it kind of started out in the computer, and then it kind of moves around to a, like a layering of the process right. and mm -hmm. kind of playing around and then you kind of let it germinate you kind of think okay that's enough I'm going to go, go and you know do something else come back to it the next day and then and then kind of take up from there. Yeah, that, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's, it's so much fun. I, I just, I love collage. <laughs> And I feel a sense of movement um, musically as well. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kept thinking this one reminds me some for some reason of candy canes, <laughs> strange candy canes. Mm. But you know, it's all subjective. We all see things differently. I, I love the idea that you see music in that. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, what about the thought process? I'm um, just looking at these two um, of your uh, beautiful collage works um, with this, you know, a 1920s theme. Um, the other one kind of had like some, um, you know, almost like washed out yellows and, and uh, light, light, light yellowish green. And here we're moving in, into purples. Is there a certain um, thought process that goes in, certain uh, message or something you wanted to convey? Or well, I think they, they used colors that were a little bit on the desaturated side. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do believe there were a lot of purples. There's a lot of greens and yellows also, if you look at Art Deco work. But um, yeah, I, I, quite often at the end, I mean, I won't do anything that has like really strong colors. Maybe that that's in me too, because I think every artist has their own palette that they work with. And uh, I tend to do that. So that's a little bit of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and go to the next one, Louise. Okay. Yeah, this one, um, I did the digital part, which were all of those larger shapes. And then those, all those funny shapes that look like animals, um, it, they were sitting next to the piece for a while. I, I have no idea of where these shapes came from. I mean, obviously I cut them at some point, but I just grabbed them and, and put them on there. I was like, oh my gosh, it's an alligator, it's a snake. What is that, a coyote? Is she like a butterfly? But that was a very typical thing that they did back then. They kind of would take animal shapes and then recreate them, make them abstract in that. I mean, that was very popular at that time. 
I think about that, but I was thrilled when I put those down. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, um, and I didn't really realize that it was popular until later on I was reading about, you know, the designs at in the twenties and how they would do that. And I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. again, I think maybe there was somebody sitting next to me that said, you gotta use those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, isn't that interesting? Yes. But she's so nonchalant, you know, she's just, da, 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 you know, with her umbrella. And then there's all these animals all around her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's just just brilliant. It, I I love it, Louise. Yeah, this oh. is one of my favorite. Now, this was an early piece, also. Actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a great sense of space, and right, exactly with with the you know the different poses that we've looked at thus far. You know, are, are so interesting and, and you know so so Parisian. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They were very indicative of that that time. Now, the person that did these, he was also a painter at one time during the Art Nouveau period. And he painted a lot of nude women. Um, and they were all those kind of similar kind of poses, but not so, I mean, these are more modern. These are more Art Deco. His, some of them were very reminiscent of his paintings, but yeah. I mean, he, it was interesting because he obviously did not really know that, or maybe they just didn't have like really good lights or anything back in those days. Um, and especially he was doing them um, in, you know, sort of secluded landscapes. Um, but um, yeah, so the, so the light wasn't great. You know, like we nowadays, if we were to do a nude, we would spend some time lighting it or finding a spot where you had beautiful shadows or whatever. But the light was pretty stark in most of them. But, you know, luckily I was able to play with them. Mm -hmm. And again, she's sort of negative positive. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you also have that the sense with uh, the three women that we've looked at, um, as you mentioned earlier, Louise, you know, with that, you know, sense of like liberation and, and sense of, of freedom that was, you know, reminiscent of, of the times. Oh, yeah. They were um, feeling very free. <laughs> you know, they were, they all, it was funny because they all cut their hair really short. It was like, you know, because before that, during Renaissance and Art Nouveau and that they all women had long hair all of a sudden I was like okay I'm gonna cut my hair and I'm gonna dress I'm gonna drop my waistline I don't need to wear a corset you know I'm gonna be comfortable and um, yeah it was it was just a wonderful time for women mm -hmm. all right Louise let's go ahead and go to the next one okay <laughs> This has been the most popular piece that I did. Um, and um, it was the last piece that I did. And I was looking through uh, these glass negatives and I saw this piece and I thought, oh my God, that's just so kitschy. And what a nice touch to a, a closing show to do this piece. Um, so um, I actually added a lot of fabric to these this piece and um, stars and there's um, a little um, jewel at the top of her head. Um, but this has gotten quite a bit of attention. <laughs> I think this almost borders on being a little Dada-ish. <laughs> so yeah, it just sort of, uh, it's a little bit more of the, the you know, 28, 29, 1928, 29. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Each one is, is so different, yet, you know, it's a, a very coherent, cohesive series. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Would you like to go to the next one or anything else you wanted to mention, Louise? Um, I think that was four, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, I did send you, I think, something that I had done at the end. Uh, but I don't know if you were going to show that or not, or if we'll have time. 
Yeah, we can take a quick look. Sure, absolutely. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you were talking, or you sent me a message talking about um, what I was doing, what I was planning on doing. And besides, you know, continuing the crazy years series into the crazy 2020 series, <laughs> if that's what it's going to be. Um, the day after I finished the show and everything, I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to take a break because I really, I'm one of these people that I work in my studio every day, you know, uh, it's like, I have to, that's how I thrive. And uh, so it was a Sunday and I sat down with my computer and I started going over photographs that I had taken in the past. And then, and also in the past year, I'd gotten into doing abstracts, like trying to learn how to do painted abstracts and just having an interest in that. But so I, it, within one day, I put together four new pieces and this was one of them. And I thought, no, you know, this says something else. This says something else about what was going on during the pandemic um, with the Black Lives Matter, um, how we stereotype people. I mean, if I could show you the other ones, it would be, you know, a little bit more conclusive. But um, it was interesting because um, it's like my art just kind of flows, you know? And um, this was just, these are things that I hadn't really dealt with, but I had been thinking a lot about how now that things are opening up, how we're having a lot of mass shootings that are going on, um, you know, some of the terrible things that had stopped uh, since we were all quarantined were sort of a good thing, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I was thinking, you know, it's just something that we really need to deal with. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I, I was very pleased with this photograph just because of what it said and the collage way it's laid out. I don't yes. know if I'll do any collaging on top, I may, you know. Yes, and then also the, the message coming through as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share, Louise. Sure. So, um, the uh, piece that we just looked at, so that's kind of reminiscent of um, some of of your your current um works as well you said you're still kind of completing or you know working on some more of this series of the crazy years but now um using some of, you know more of your photography and and um using some more like political societal uh themes as well right i um also during this past year or two years um i have been walking around my neighborhood taking photographs of the people that live here. And um, most of them are Guatemalan, Mayan. They're all very lovely people, hardworking, really nice people. And I've been um, documenting them um, just to educate people on the fact that these are nice, hardworking people that belong here. And um, you know, so that's been a project I've had going on too. Now I walk around with my camera phone. <laughs> I, I tried for, when I first moved here, I, I went out with my big girl camera and nobody would let me photograph them. But these um, camera phones have gotten so sophisticated. I mean, the one that I have, I can even shoot in raw, you know, which is like a 24 megapixel camera. So the quality is pretty good. Um, but anyway, so I've been having fun and actually getting to know people around here too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now it's kind of like moving out and getting, you know, more in touch with your immediate neighborhood. And it also seems to be, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you told me if this is correct, almost like um, bringing um, an underlying message, almost like a sense of unity. That's um, okay. And understanding each other, you know. I think that, um, you know, we, we've been separated um, in the last six years. Um, family separating, friends separating, you know, over political stuff that we have really not much control over. But, um, you know, I think it's time to take a step back, 
and look at the very human part of people instead of um, judging people that you don't know or you don't like just because the color of hat they wear or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that's going to be one of my missions. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and that's, that's a beautiful mission and, and what a beautiful message. And I think that it really hearkens, and I'd like to know your thoughts on this, Louise, it, you know, the, the power of, of art to heal, not only to the artist, but also, you know, to the viewer, to society. And it seems like um, artists are some of the first, not, not the only, but some of the first to really take a, a, um, a stand visually, uh, musically, poetically, and whatever their avenue of expression is, to really reflect what's going on in society and, and what is changing and, and perhaps almost like being the forerunners of, of um, what need, what, I don't know if what needs to change is, is correct, but at least being a reflection of what's going on and, and moving into that sense of, of unity and, and cohesiveness and, and neighborhood, you know, almost like the, the definition of neighborhood expanding out to a, a global neighborhood and here, like a metaphor is your neighborhood to be, you know, any neighborhood. What, what's your take on all that? Oh, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that artists, that is our mission, you know, is to uh, show people what is going on, um, what is wrong, what is right, what is beautiful, which is ugly. It, that is our mission, is to educate people as to maybe change, and to be able to re-see things in a realistic way or unrealistic, you know, <laughs> use your imagination. But um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've always felt that that was my mission in life. And, you know, maybe I, you know, I, I've been very fortunate um, with my career because I've always been able to really work in the arts. And uh, so, you know, uh, it's been a good thing, but now it's all I want to do is make art and I want to, you know, see where that guides me and what I can do with it. Mm -hmm. Louise, we're going to need to wrap the show up, um, but is there anything that we haven't touched upon in regard to your art, your artistic journey that you'd like to share with us? Um, I can't think of anything, but I would like to thank everybody for watching this, if you do. And um, to say that uh, if you want to contact me, you can, uh, my email is noclouise at yahoo.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram, lakeworthlouise21. And um, what else? Facebook, it's just Louise Notes. And my email, um, if you're interested in talking some more about any of these pieces that you've seen, is notesluise at yahoo.com. What did I say then? Well, anyways. <laughs> Louise, it has been such a pleasure to get to know you and to get to know this whole series that you created, you know, during quarantine with the, the you know, crazy times, 1920s, you know, French Parisian photographic theme. And um, having you elaborate on them and helping us understand, you know, what the purpose was and, and also your interesting uh, creative process as well. And much success with these uh, new areas that you're exploring or you're this great explorer and this great experimenter. So it will be interesting to see, you know, what you come up with. You have this neighborhood theme and with the photographs. And as you said, you don't know where it's going to go, but stay in touch with us and, and let us know the, the direction and how this all develops. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having the platform to share with everybody. And thank it was you. nice meeting you too. Yes, absolutely. Fellow redhead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank okay. you. Thank you for being our guest okay. on Art and Talk today. Thank okay. you everybody for watching Art and Talk today. And again, we appreciate the time you take to watch Art and Talk. Do stay connected with us on our YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page. I'd like to thank you again, Louise, for being our guest artist. And we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed. Thanks.